Welcome to UCouncil. This is our second lecture on Canada Emergency Response Benefits, CERB. This is an update. In this lecture, we actually look at the specific legislation that has been enacted by the government with respect to CERB. And we'll talk about the eligibility requirement for people. Uh, the information is a bit new and slightly different than what we had stated in our previous lecture, so it's important to uh, listen to this lecture. Also, some of the people had raised in their comments about the requirement of having $5,000 in income to be eligible for CERB, and that information is correct. We elaborate that um, on, in this lecture, and we appreciate those people who have uh, um, given us information on that, uh, that issue. We begin with our usual disclaimer that this lecture is not legal advice, so if you have any specific questions, you should contact a lawyer or a paralegal or Service Canada or Canada Revenue Agency to confirm whether you are entitled to these benefits or not. Today we'll talk about how much benefits you could be entitled to, who are the individuals who will receive CERB, and who are individuals who may be ineligible. Let's talk about how much. So far we understand that individuals who will be entitled to CERB will get $2,000 per month taxable, and this is a flat amount that everyone will get. I am not so sure about this amount being the flat $2,000 based on Section 7 sub 3 of the legislation that has been enacted, so I wanted to share that information with you. Now, this is the legislation that has been enacted uh, on March 25th, 2020, Bill C-13, and it has a number of legislation that has been approved, and Part 2 is Canada Emergency Response Benefits Act, which I wanted to show you, and if you go down on Section 7, it talks about the amount of payment, and Section 7 indicates that the amount of payment will be fixed by regulation, and we are still waiting for regulation, so once the regulation is out, then we will know exactly what is the amount fixed by the government, is it $2,000 or different. Section 7 sub 2 indicates that the minister will fix this amount by regulation, what will be that um, amount, it will be decided by the minister, and Section 7 sub 3, uh, which is what I wanted to point out, it indicates that the regulation may distinguish among different classes of workers. What are the classes of workers? It is not indicated in the legislation how the classes will be formed, what kind of distinction may be formed in those uh, workers, but it indicates that it is possible that different classes of workers may receive di different amount of uh, CERB. And that kind of makes sense because if you look at it, if you are an individual who is entitled to regular EI benefits, and the amount that you're getting is less than $2,000, let's say $1,500 a month, and you're entitled to regular EI benefits, but a person who is not entitled to regular EI benefits but gets the CERB, and that person will get $2,000 per month. So from the perspective of a person who has qualified for EI, it is a bit unfair that that person will receive less money and the person who has qualified for CERB and who has not qualified for EI may receive more money. But this is only the point that I wanted to raise, that this amount may be different. We will have to wait and see what does the regulation indicate, and only then we will know what amount will be paid. Who will receive CERB? There are three requirements. Number one, the person has to be worker. There is a specific definition of worker in the legislation. Number two, that worker has to be eligible. Again, the eligibility is defined in the legislation. We'll talk about it. And third, the person must apply. If the person doesn't apply, then the person will not automatically receive CERB, even though the person, the worker, may be eligible. Now, who is a worker? Section 2 defines a worker. The worker is at least 15 years of age. The person has to be a resident in Canada. Now, this is not defined who will be a resident in Canada. I've posted a link. This is from CRA for the purposes of income tax, so it may not apply to the circumstances of this case. But the reason I posted this link and I wanted to show you what this link indicates. Um, this shows if you want to determine your residency status with respect to your taxes, then these are the steps that you need to go through to determine that. The point I wanted to make is that it's not that straightforward whether you're resident of Canada or not. So some of the people had asked this question that they were uh, laid off from their employment and they were working on a work permit uh, in Canada, so whether they will receive CRB or not. So the answer is I don't know, but what I do know is that you have to be a resident in Canada. Whether that specific person will qualify as a resident or not, it is not explained, and you'll have to wait for the regulation. Number three, to be a worker, the person must have earned $5,000 in 2019 or, at, or in the last 12 months 
from the date that you apply for CERB. So if you apply for CERB on April 6th, then 12 months preceding April 6th, you should have earned $5,000. So what is the source of that $5,000 that will be considered okay for eligibility? Number one, if you earn $5,000 through employment, that's great. If you earn those $5,000 through self-employment, it will be counted. If you are receiving EI, but only for maternity or parental benefits, then those will be counted. Important to note that if you are receiving EI for regular benefits or sickness benefits, you cannot count those money towards 5K, only for maternity or parental benefits. Similarly, if you are receiving money from a provincial plan for pregnancy or childcare for a newborn or an adopted child, then you can count that money towards $5,000 uh, as a worker. So if you have not made $5,000 in 2019 or in the last 12 months in any of these categories, then you will not be considered a worker and therefore you will not be eligible for CERB. Now, with respect to eligibility, it is Section 6 of Canada Emergency Response Benefit Act that provides information about eligibility. Important to note that the person must cease working due to COVID-19. So the, the cessation of work is tied to COVID-19. Number two, at least the person should be off uh, work for at least 14 days within the four weeks period against which you are applying. And the way the legislation indicates is that you will get uh, payment for every four weeks. And I suspect you will apply every four weeks for the next payment until the, the entire 16 weeks is uh, consumed. Third thing uh, for eligibility is that during the time period for which you are applying, you have received no income from what sources? From employment, self-employment, EI, and in this case, all kinds of EI is included, whether it's regular, illness, parental, maternity. If you were receiving EI, then you will not be eligible for CERB. If you were not receiving any EI, no income from EI, then you will be eligible. Or if you were receiving any provincial plan uh, payment from for pregnancy or newborn adoption, then you, then you will not be eligible for EI. And the last point is important or any other income that is prescribed by regulation. So we will wait for the regulation. But what could this show? Let me give you an example. What if you had four rental houses from which you were receiving rental income? Would you still be qualified for CERB? Maybe not. So in this case, the regulation may state that if you are earning income from any other source, whether it's investment income, whether it is rental income, or any other source of income, and for a certain amount, then you may not be eligible for CERB. So we will have to wait and see what does the regulation state with respect to the income. If you are not earning any income for the period for which you're applying from any of these sources, only then you qualify for CERB. And finally, you're not eligible for CERB if you have voluntarily quit typo here, quit employment, you're resigned from employment, then you're not eligible for CERB. Now, in our last lecture, I have given some eligibility examples, which the government had indicated in its press release, and it indicated that you were still employed, but not receiving any income due to COVID-19, that you will uh, be able to get CERB. If you were sick, quarantined, taking care of someone who is sick due to COVID-19, working parents who were not receiving any income, um, and because of taking care of their children who were sick or who were at home due to school or daycare closure. So these were the examples given in the press release. They are not part of the legislation that I've gone through, but they may be part of the regulation um, that will come into force. And only then we will know uh, who will be the people, uh, examples of people who will be eligible. Now let's talk about some of the people who will be ineligible. These are examples that I've uh, I'm, I've selected because of the legislation that I've read. So if you are dismissed for cause, and the cause is a specific word that is used in employment law, you may be aware of it, but essentially if you have done any wrongdoing at work and that caused your dismissal, then you will not be eligible for CERB. If you cease working for reasons unrelated to COVID-19, an example of that could be you receive your termination notice back in July of 2019 that your employment will end on March 30th, 2020. Now that termination of employment is unrelated to COVID-19 because it is prior to the outbreak of COVID-19. In that case, based on the legislation, you will not be eligible for CERB. You may be eligible for EI, for regular EI benefits, but not CERB. 
if you earn any partial income for the period you're applying for CERB, then you will not be eligible for CERB. An example of that could be that your home, your employment is, is seized, but your employer is paying you, let's say, $1,000 a month or $500 a month. In that case, there's a partial income, and, and for that reason, you will not be eligible for CERB. So you should, be, you should not be earning any income for which you're applying for CERB. And again, if you resign from employment, you're not eligible. The reason I'm stating that again is because there was one question from, from, a, from a subscriber that he had quit his employment back in the middle of 2019 and then he was taking care of his health. Would he be eligible? Based on the criteria, unfortunately, that person will not be eligible for CERB. Now, if you were dismissed prior to COVID-19 outbreak, this is an important point I wanted to raise. So let's say your employment was terminated back in October, September of 2019, unrelated to COVID-19. You may have been receiving EI benefits, maybe not. But now for the last two months, you were actively looking for work. You are ready to work. You're looking for work, but you are not finding any employment due to COVID-19. You will still not be eligible because it is not that you're ready and willing to work, but it is that the reason why you're not working is because your employment uh, has ceased because of uh, COVID-19. So it's an important point for people to note in those circumstances. I hope that this lecture does not confuse you further. The information has been coming out uh, in bits and pieces and we're trying to convey it to you as quickly as possible. Once the regulation comes out, only then we will know more about who are the individuals who will be eligible, who will receive CRB and what will be the circumstances. So keep watching the news, keep watching press releases and we will be back with another lecture once we are aware of the regulation uh, that has been enacted. Thank you for watching.